Let's go Geo. As usual, I'm your field guide, Heather, and today we are in the desert southwest U.S., a place notorious for those bad air quality days, and a place where we've been exploring around, talking about topics like particulate matter and other air pollutants. And what better place for me to introduce to you guys a new gadget around here. Let's head back to camp and I'll show you what I got. And here we have it. This is an air quality monitor. And let me just get it out of the box here and show you what it's like. So this air quality monitor is by the company Vivor. One of my favorite things about this, you'll see in the box here, this cord. This is a USB-C cord, so you can recharge this. That's really nice for me, you know, just traveling, being on the road, being around camp. It makes it really easy to be able to recharge this on the go. So also, there's our little uh, manual that tells you some things about what this particular model of air quality detection can do. Actually, just turn it on. So if we look here, there's a couple buttons in the back. This is the power button, just hold it down and it will start its cycle of turning on. When you first turn it on, this guy here is gonna start at 200 and it's a 200 second countdown, just so you know. Um, if that were actually the amount, that would be insanely high and uh, you wouldn't wanna be in that environment. <laughs> first off, it tells us the time and a general air quality index. If it's up here, then it's poor air quality and that's bad for just about anyone. All right, so you also have your temperature and a humidity value, but let's get into the good stuff now. So these are the five indicators that make this thing really interesting. So what you'll notice is first PM 2.5s and PM 10s. We've been talking about this a lot around here lately and going on some interesting adventures to check out and, and, and discover what PMs are and why they matter. And again, these are sizes, so PM 2.5, it refers to 2.5 microns or less, and then PM10s are slightly larger. PM10s would be 10 microns or less. You can see the measurement is um, mic microns or micrograms. So these are three micrograms per meters cubed. And these numbers are low enough right now that I don't really have anything to worry about, but there are charts out there, and I have talked about them here, and I'll put, I'll put an example here too that you can look at to reference uh, to know if these levels are high. So your PM 2.5s are really small dust particles, stuff like that. PM 10s, like I said, are larger, and that might be stuff like mold spores or larger um, particles. So that's what is PM is particulate matter. So there are these really small particles in the air, and you might be thinking, no big deal, right? Actually, these are small enough to get into your lungs. That's where the problem comes in, and that's why you might want to monitor these in your environment, be it indoor or outdoor. These PMs can get into your lungs and actually work their way into your bloodstream, so they are problematic, and that causes a lot of different health problems in the short term and the long term. Uh, there's lots of studies out there. I'll throw some studies there. Now, you'll see things like PMs go up. If the wind's blowing and you're exposed to a lot of fine dust particles, also fire smoke, be it the wildfire season, which is getting worse and worse, unfortunately. Um, even if you're sitting by, say, a campfire, you would see these spike up quite high, and I'll show you that in a second. Another thing we have here is this section here, TVOC. That's organic compounds, or in this case, total volatile organic compounds. So we have milligrams per meters cubed there, and the same here. We'll talk about this one in a second. These are usually like what you see here, the measurements, we point something. If it gets higher than that, you know, if it starts getting into ones in these levels, then yeah, you then you have something to worry about. Organic compounds are, like it sounds, these are compounds, but they're nasty compounds in your environment. So those two VOCs or organic compounds are essentially dissolved gases in the air. But where do they come from? Well, this actually can be all around you most of the time, and that's kind of the scary part. These are found in everyday things items in your environment. So your household products, even stuff like dishwashing, detergents, and maybe deodorants or chemicals that you're used to using in your house. Um, also building materials at a construction site, but also just in your house. It's full of building materials that may contain adhesives, so particle board and pressed woods, 
and in the flooring and carpeting, stuff like that. And then also around your workspace, if you're exposed to sources like printers. And so it's, again, it's everyday products emit these organic compounds. Uh, you'll also see spikes in organic compounds if you are exposed to fire smoke, which is becoming an increasing phenomenon now that we have uh, wildfire seasons that go rampant. Uh, you'll also, if you were just sitting around a fire, you would see these go up. But just as an example, I'll show you tonight uh, around the, the campfire how much they spike. Now, one dangerous TVOC is actually this one. So this is a, is a specific organic compound. The HCHO is actually measuring formaldehyde. So this one is quite common. And this is something that comes along with, again, those, those woods adhesives, um, paints and chemicals and stuff like that. You might be exposed to uh, formaldehyde gases. So you really want to monitor that in your environment as well. And this specifically pulls out that organic compound um, on this monitor. So I like that. And again, those are measured. And, and I can put some charts up again to show you, like, you can look them up online as well. There's charts to show you exactly when it becomes dangerous in your environment. Okay, so our last spot here is measuring carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide can come from a number of sources in your environment. Both your indoor and outdoor environment can have sources that will spike carbon dioxide, and that can be very bad for you, if not deadly, if it gets too high. Sources of carbon dioxide vary from industrial to combustion to animal respiration. So lots of reasons why carbon dioxide might spike, but your key is some sort of ventilation or getting away from the source to be safe. This particular monitor also has an alarm set in that will beep if that carbon dioxide gets too high and you wanna get out of there if that happens. The threshold for this is 1000 ppm or parts per million because after 1000, you start to have some negative effects. One thing that we've seen around here is is a carbon dioxide a natural source of carbon dioxide on our adventures around the long valley caldera mammoth area of california so there we can actually see a natural spike in carbon dioxide and that region has been the source of deaths because of carbon dioxide poisoning another source that might be a little easier for you to observe is in an enclosed area of any source but let me show you if i just get well right here you can see I'm already, I'm not even completely enclosed, but just because I'm talking near it, this level is a lot higher than any background rate around 420. Now, if I get in my car and sit in there with the doors closed and no ventilation, let's see what happens to that number in that situation. So spikes in all of these things that we've talked about here are problematic because they do have both short-term and long-term health effects. Everything ranging from just making you feel tired or nauseated, but also long-term health effects that, that can be harmful to your lungs, your respiratory system, and your cognitive abilities, and you, even your liver, kidneys, stuff like that, especially when you get into these compounds. So you do want to monitor these things. They can cause issues. And I really like this particular monitor just because it is relatively inexpensive compared to all the features that it comes along with. All right, so I got a little cozy campfire going and as promised, let's do a little demo. Here's our air quality monitor in the box. So the vents are kind of blocked here, but if we pull it out now, let's put it a little closer to the fire. So now it's exposed to some of that fire smoke and the byproducts of the fire and we'll see what happens to some of the parameters we've been talking about. You can already see the PMs are up. So the PM 2.5s well above 50 for the 2.5s. That's pretty high. The PM 10s are well climbing now above 250. Um, you can see the organic compounds here. They're above getting above 0.5. That's in the potentially dangerous zone. We do have those fire seasons. We can be kind of bathed in uh, stuff that's even who knows you know what could be in the fire smoke. Uh, you can really get a lot of 
cool information out of this so you can see where the dangerous zones are. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found that review handy. And if you are interested in getting something like this, the links are in the description along with some discount codes that they've provided us with. And if you're also interested in learning more about those particle pollutants, well, join me on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo. It's about to get interesting. See you in the next adventure. Thank you.